July 13th. All right, <clears throat> so what do we have on the docket today? So I saw that you've got this, uh, the rename PR up. Um, let's see. Great. Uh, do we get some time here? All right, okay, and then I think what did we want to do? All right, so um, let's see. So, Sahils, so what, what would you like to uh, talk about today? Uh, the renaming one, the renaming of PR uh, directly to location, and uh, the comment link one I actually implemented to work the announcement points. <coughs> Sorry, what? And, uh, as you said, like that. Uh, after that, we'll merge it mm -hmm. and leave three of the announcement points for later for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we'll probably check that out in this meeting here. So let's see. Not an issue. Great. Um, let's see. Um, so, and then... Uh, And I also want to do like uh, what what uh, should be done with that uh, something you were about to flush about. Okay, yeah, uh, um, and I think implementation I, stuff. I think let's see. Uh, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so Hashim, so or uh, anything else from you? No, that's it. Okay, so Hashim, so what do we got for you today? Uh, yeah. Uh... Section uh, reviewed my PR uh, for transfer learning, and uh, I also made a few changes. And I wanted your thoughts on a few other changes that he suggested. <clears throat> okay, um, let's see. And uh, other than that, uh, I'm starting to uh, work on multi output support for multi output models, and uh, uh, I wanted to discuss that as well. And uh, also, if we can merge the other PRs, I know you uh, mentioned section for review. Uh, uh, are we getting them reviewed as well? Okay, has he reviewed them? Uh, he just reviewed the transfer learning PR. Okay, all right, okay, so let's take a look at the other ones. All right, so we need to do saving and loading and so a second, which I think yeah, we already looked at. Yeah, I just rebased at, so. uh, both of these as well. By the way, we we have uh, reviewed these uh, the two of these before. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, I thought we had right. Yeah, <laughs> we just were waiting. Uh, yeah, we were waiting uh, for the test, it, right? Uh, checks Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, okay. All right. Um, so. Let's just go take a look at these right now since these hopefully quick. Um, so, okay. Um, let's see. Okay. U3. All right. Bye. 
Alright. Uh, examples, notebooks, example by stacking. Okay. So, da, 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 let's just run everything while we're at it. Okay. Div file has created a cache channel function. Uh, this is also one of the changes that section suggested, and I added it to other notebooks as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the parameters for cache download. Okay. I would say that we should link to the, um, I think we should link to the docs page for this um, because there uh, is. Oh, yeah. I linked it in the transfer learning PR, but uh, I forgot to link it in the other ones. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I think that will, I think there's a, let's see, where's the networking helpers? Oh, yeah, I think there's this curl command that shows you how to calculate the SHA sum. So I think that's probably going to be helpful because, you know, people will need that. Um, so rather than put that in, um, yeah, I think that's definitely a good idea to, to, to sh explain more about this, but we could probably just link to it. So let's just make a note of that. Um, so. All right. Um, and I think, can you use, can you use the cross references in this, the RST cross references? Or is that not available? Will that work? Will, will it work if you do a cross reference, like an RST cross reference in this, or will it not work? Uh, no, I don't think that works. Okay. Hmm. Uh, you have to put in the link. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. Um, okay. All right. Okay. So great. Um, Can we do top level async? Does it, does it support top level async? Um, I wonder, I thought I'd seen something about it. Let's just see what happens. Uh, about cross referencing, I guess it is possible. Uh, I will share a link in the channel. Okay, great. Okay, let's see if this works. Yeah, it looks like, so we did a top level await here. So let's just do a top level await here, or a top level async for. Um, let's see. I wish there was a cleaner way to do that. Maybe we should. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I wish there was a cleaner way to do this. Like, because usually you could do, you know, like just list load, but you can't do that with with async. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, yeah. Is there. Let's see. Oh, okay. We could use the no async version of load. Um, maybe we should do that. I wonder, will that work in the notebook? Okay. Hmm. 
maybe we should do that. Is this cleaner, do we think? Or because the thing is, we need to figure out how to. We need we need to go implement the splitting. Is but that's not going to happen right now. So, is this is this more intuitive than the other one, or is the is the other? Because this is this load will return a generator. Um, so what do you, what do you guys think? Do we do the full function, or do we do this? Uh -huh. Uh, what did you say about splitting? So, uh, the split stuff, so... Okay. The splitting, essentially we have... Oh, I think I remember that issue we were talking about, actually. Um, damn it. No, okay. Uh, yeah, so we were going to, where is this? Sources. There was an issue to, there was an issue to say, Okay, this is a thing to, um, there was an issue to say, to implement splitting within sources. Um, let's see, where was it? Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, okay. Yeah, so of course this is the link stuff. It's all tagged as source, yeah. Okay, um, configuration parameter. Yeah, so basically the issue was oh, what are we where are we at on this? Okay. Yeah, so the issue here was essentially this sources sources is like this list thing. Um Okay, what do we got here? Yeah. So sources is like a list right now. Um, and so we can't pass. There's that. Let's see. Where's We have this sources class, right, which sort of wraps a collection of sources together. Um, and where is it? Sources. Source, source. Um, this is the regular source stuff, and then this is the sources class. Yeah, so this this stuff is not easily configured because it's this async context manager list, um, and so ideally we would make it an object with a config. Um, so this is like one of the things that doesn't follow the config pattern um, because it's a list essentially. Um, so, um, let's see, and how did this relate back to this? Uh, that was, oh, the splitting, right? So, eventually, we were going to try to implement the splitting within this sources context class um, because this sort of wraps, this is, we, we usually use this to wrap any sources, and I believe it gets used in load to wrap the sources as well. So, ideally, we could pass... Um, arguments to load or something to just do the split within the load call. Um, but right now, obviously, we cannot. Um, so, anyways, just wanted to call that out in case uh, anybody wants to tackle that. So, um, all right. So, yeah. So, what do we do? Would do, do? Should we do which? Which one makes more sense? So, I think that this makes sense because you know there's an async call here, and we show people async IO run. Um, now, I think this is shorter lines, right? So, uh, what what would be more friendly from a person who is not familiar standpoint coming in? Like, which one of these do we think do we think would be easier easier for a first time user to 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 use? The second one looks more natural. 
all the other things work that way. So. Okay. All right. We can keep both of them. Like, we can oh, yeah, say that's that point. <laughs> for loading data set, we can also do it like this. All right, that's a, that's a good point. Okay, so let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, and feel free to try out the no async version of load. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, so where do we? All right, there we go. Um, how do I mark down this? All right, whatever. So here's the async, and then also feel free to try out the no async version of load. Okay, perfect. Okay, good idea. Why not have both? Um, and I know we have some of this stuff in the other ones, but um, this way we have at least shown it, right? Um, okay. Async four, okay, yeah, well. All right, there we go. All right, so now we've shown both. Um, da, da, da. Okay, let's just train split. All right, and train four, we'll be using a stacking technique to assemble our model. The following are the steps to assemble by stacking. Train first base model on train data. Use the first level base models to provide validation on validation data and test data. All right. Um, we'll use high level stack all the validation predictions to list cons consisting of stacked validation predictions and stack test predictions. Build and train level two meta model. Stacked valid predictions will serve as features to train our level two meta model now and so on. Model is ready to predict. Uh, training for several models. Okay, so uh, model load. Okay, so we load them by the entry point. Okay, so let's mention also uh, models. Uh, let's see, what should we call it? So model entry points uh, argument the name pass to load can be found on the models plugin page and then we'll link to it um, All right, and you said that there was possibly a way in B Sphinx, raw cells, pages generator. Switch the cell toolbar to raw cell format. Parse by Sphinx. Okay, so this would be the, if we select this RST, then it will link via, let's see, markdown code raw. Okay, so we don't have that option, so. Ah, all right, so the raw and be convert cell types can be used to render different Select raw and be convert. Switch the cell to one to raw format. Choose the appropriate raw and be notebook convert format within the cell. I don't see that. Um, Juniper raw cells. And save changes. Am I is am I doing something obviously wrong here? I'm not seeing this. Can you just select raw as it is? Then there might be an option. Uh, 
Well, it says raw NB convert next to the reload and then sell toolbar. Yeah. Do you have a node notebook convert installed? I believe so. Let's check. Um, because I can see it in my notebook. Okay. Okay, perhaps we're running a different version of Python here. Um, Juniper Lab 3.7 site packages. Uh, what about notebooks? Thanks. What? Notebook Sphinx. Notebook Sphinx. Um, oh, yeah, okay, this is Notebook Sphinx. Would you look at that? All right. Um, okay, looks like that's installed too. Um, no, it's just a link. Uh, it's not Notebooks. Oh, yeah, sorry, it is. I just saw the last one. Uh, I wonder. Okay, well, we won't, we won't, let's see, focus on too much, but. Um, if you have it, if you have it, then um, see if you can you can add it right when you uh, um, if you have if you have it, then then you can try to do the cross cross reference with the um, um, I, I would say try to do the cross reference right um, or when when you're editing these, try to do it and and let's see if it shows up. Um, let's see. All right. And yeah, okay. Or via the DF model list models command. Let's see. I was thinking we should add the like JSON or config loader output to this thing because this is um, SLR model. Yeah, let's see what what do we got here. Okay, these are by class name. Yeah, we need to update this um, to do entry point. And so this is, I, I realized this the other day, looking at that output, there are the operations that you'd written, Sahil, and, and that we only have list models right now and services sources, um, but they aren't very helpful because they just list the tr class name. So we need to update those commands. Um, um, let's see. Um, let's see. So, okay, so let's make a note of that. Um, uh, use uh, ref and doc if possible via, uh, where was that? Thank you for finding this. Okay. Um, and then we need to update the list command, so. Uh, support I'll put in config loader okay um, all right so let's run this all right so we've got our models and we train our models and assess the accuracy great visualize the accuracies and I don't have matplotlib um, why don't I have matplotlib? Or wait, no, it's just mad. Wrong version. Okay. Um, first of all, let me just run validation of test. All right. And then, okay, in predict, prediction quality value. Okay. And model predictions. Okay, so for loop, that looks good. Validation prediction two which is the level two, so, or no, model two, model two. And this is the record. Okay, validation data, which was, where did validation data come from? Okay, here's validation data, great. Okay, and that's records. Stack validation predictions. All right, great. And then we have 
the actual uh, actual the predictions, the test data, meta model, and the plot, and the predictions. Okay, great. Perfect. So did you, were you going to add the accuracy? I thought you said that this one was better and you were going to add the accuracy on this. Oh, you did. Okay, wait. Yeah. Okay, training the model. model. Okay, then there's the accuracy. Okay, perfect. And then there's the prediction. Yeah. Great. So let's take a look at this. Um, so what did we do here? There, we don't need that execution count stuff. Uh, Is this execution count is that the and what is this no 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 and all right I don't think did we change anything here let's see no yeah So basically just the load function and the link to the models page. So, and then this is this, this must be the execution count. So, and this one we don't need. Oh, it stops there. I see. Okay, whatever. Um, not a big deal. So git commit. Okay, so we uh, show no async version of load. Um, and we've, okay, and we've added the uh, models plugins page stuff, so uh, create use of and let's just uh, commit amend that actually. All right, and were you going to do, let's see, what else did we just say on that? Um, All right, so that was that. Um, did we have any other things on that? Let's see. Yeah, ref to cache download, and then we'll be good. So, um, and we also uh, linked to models page uh, for entry points. Um, and yeah, I think anywhere we use model.load, we should probably reference that. That way, people know where to find the other models, um, or the the list command, which you know we'll have to find a way to make a little more manageable. Um, all right. Um, and then saving and loading. Okay. All right, so let's open that guy.
Same thing with cache download. Uh, let's see. Same thing with model load. Um, great. Yeah, that's right. Let's see if model. I wonder, okay, so this is another thing. When we do, let's see. Yeah, we were going to save the config too, right? Remember, we, we talked about saving the entire config of the model into the directory. And so in that case, I guess now this is not for right now, but, you know, that would be something like load saved. Um, and then the directory. Hmm. Is that what we're going to want? Let's see. See so yeah, how we have to do. This would be the, the location that's passed, right? So we would do model. We need a we need an instance of the. Let's see. Yeah, so when we when we when we save the config, so this is right. We have to instantiate the config um, uh, ourselves. But then when we when we are saving the config to wherever the location is at the directory, um, ideally we could provide you know a way to load the model um, just from that um, and and not need to override the config. So. Um, you know, this we talked about. You know, what takes precedence. So, in the case that we uh, do define it right, then we would load the saved data, right? But no changes to config, right? So, in the case that we don't define any of this, right, and we just have the directory, and we want to load the same thing from the directory or from the location, then we would pass. You know, just we'd we'd have to have some method that just does the. Um, you know, just loads loads the uh, like loads from the location and, and figures out the model within it. Um, so that I mean, essentially, that would be if we're looking at this new location thing. Um, uh, right, we'd have location. Uh, Stir location. Actually, I think we'd have yeah, because this location, the location really becomes like a optional at this point. Um, look here. Let's see. Load. Or I guess what it would be would be we would have something that's either like it would be like a union of the location or union of stir and data flow because if we get a data flow then we load the data flow if we get a string then we load the string um uh, i think that that maps what we talked about um sahil right so we would take, you know, this model saved would take the either the string or the data flow, right? Because you'll be creating a data flow based on a location. And so a user could provide either a, a string, which we auto create into a data flow, or a data flow itself. And we'd load the saved model. Um, and so that would be, you know, once again, we're going to need a probably a high level function or something here um, because we'll need a async and a no async version of that um what do you guys think is that should we do this as a high level function should we do this as a a model uh, class method um because i think it's going to be yeah could it should it be a high level function or should it be a model class method does anybody have any opinions strongly one way or the other um, uh, don't we have I, a high class, uh, high level class method load already? 
Yeah, we have a load. Yeah, we do have a load method already. Exactly. And that loads data from sources. So this is to load a safe model. So, yeah, prior... so it should be in model class, right? Yeah, that sounds sounds good to me. Um, so let's see. So model loads. Saved. Okay, so yeah, so loads is does load saved seem like a good um, good name or, or should we do because we have model dot load for the um, can't we just we can only load something which is saved, right? What? We can only load something if it is saved. Yeah, yeah. So load save would be like unnecessary. Yeah, that we wouldn't need a save method, right? Um, is that what you're saying, or or? No, I'm saying the name load save would be like load saved. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is a bit of an overloaded uh, method name in there, huh? Okay. Um. So maybe yeah. Let's see. So maybe we should actually repurpose this whole um load class method because this is a little bit um. Let's see, this is a little bit uh, uh, overloaded, as it were. Um, so we have we have loading the entry point, right? So model dot so model dot load because this isn't really loading a model. This is really just like instantiating. This is loading a model class, right? But as far as an end user is concerned, that's probably you know. Uh, yes, it looks a bit unnatural. Yeah, it looks a bit unnatural. Yeah, so so maybe we should say you know model dot entry point or model dot yeah. Let's see, if we do model dot entry point, then that's you know pretty obvious that we're requesting the model by this entry point. Um, uh, another alternative could be to have two high level functions, uh, one load source and another load. Model, load model. Maybe. Yeah, that, that could be good. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, one load source. One load model. Let's see. So. Yeah. His load is a bit of a catch all term there. Um, let's see. Yeah, load source, load model. We can probably overload it. Yeah, we like probably when can. When it find the source, it will load the source. Yeah. And if it finds it, it is a model type instance, then it will load the model. Yeah. So, well, the one the one issue is that uh, right now. Okay, yeah, this is the main thing. So basically everything runs through, every, everything hits this stuff. So if you do load, does it do, I think it does sources to record, your records to sources, yeah. Um, so, wait a minute. Save and load both take their first argument as a source and they also support they also support this thing where it converts um, it converts it into like if it's a string or a path it goes ahead and does it base source dot load um, based on that um, so which is also really okay it's based it's loading based on the suffix of the file path. So if you do a CSV source, then it loads the CSV. Or if you say dot CSV, then it loads the CSV source. Uh, dot JSON loads a, a JSON source. Okay. Um, so if we were to overload this, then, you know, yeah, and, the, and we had a model, it really, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, hmm, it wouldn't really reliably be able to determine it, I don't think, because we're already sort of looking at this string parameter here. Uh, so loads, so so separate functions may be the way to go there. Um, but also, also I think moving this right into the class might be good. Um, so high level or move it into the class. Well, if we move it into the class, we can create a high level function for it later. 
um, or like in that that way we can we can flush out the concept. So, and and I'm also thinking about this within the context of sources now because everything is really very similar. Um, okay. So, any other thoughts? anybody anybody got more more thoughts on this? So. So we basically we've determined that we need to we need to change that load function to not not I think I think this is probably what we need to go with here. I'm, I mean entry point may not be the best uh, term. So what any any thoughts because I think load load definitely needs to be um, let's see. okay, here's the other thing actually the uh, and we have something like uh, model dot create model dot create. And, and that would create a model of this entry point. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's see. So, that, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, that sounds good. good. So we could say model dot create. And then it would look like this, right? That's what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's great. Okay. Um, okay, that's great. Yeah, I like that. Let's do that. So, um, where is... So, model... Um, create, yeah. Okay, so we have the model that create class method. Um, so, uh, let's see. We should implement the uh, create uh, class method, uh, which takes the model um, model uh, uh, entry point as its first argument, uh, and then either the config for the model as the second argument or the uh, a keyword or uh, or keyword arguments will be passed uh, to the model uh, models in it. Uh, in absence of a second uh, positional argument. All right. Uh, so basically, def create um, uh, entry point and then uh, Right, and so, yeah, perfect. Okay, so that's good stuff. All right, so saving and loading, we found out, found out that we should uh, have a combination load the entry point of a given name or the entry point and instantiate model class func or method class method uh, 
create uh, tracking here. Okay, great. Um, all right, so now we need to figure out. So we've got this model create, and now we've got the load. So that the issue here becomes um, the issue here becomes the same thing that you just ran into, Sahil, um, with uh, the high-level run function um, and importing that from high-level um, to from high-level. Uh, because if you call run from model and then model implements or and then model ca calls in the high level then yeah we have a circular import situation um so i was thinking the best way to, to handle that is probably to move this stuff um let's see we should probably move to model uh we should probably just move this into its own file so we should have high level data flow and it's kind of like we have for the cli um we, we have uh, ML and data flow. So we should probably move high level into its own uh, directory and then split it out into data flow and ML. Um, I believe that will solve our problem. Uh, let's see. So, and then... You mean like splitting the high level file into various files and creating an NF2? Yes. Yes, uh, and that way, because I think you'd ran into that, right? Yes, yes. I actually tried use it, using it in the model file, but it was giving that issue. Yeah, hopefully that, that solves that. I believe that would solve that uh, issue. So um, model.create. So we decided we want to do this, um, and then we decided for loading. So this is our, our, our loading, um, because this is a loading code block. Um, we wanted to do okay so we're going to need to do an await this this load would have to turn into a await call and then this would be the location or the data flow and then it would use the high level data flow or high level run function if it is a data flow otherwise it um Otherwise, what does it do? Well, it creates data flow. It's same same sort of flow that you're dealing with right now, um, where we'll, and we'll address that in a second. So essentially we would, actually we could just go implement this. Um, okay, so let's finish up, let's finish up the, uh, this, this, looks, this looks good to me. Let's just make the same tweaks that we made um, to the last one with referencing cache download and um same thing on the on the load data set let's show both versions here and then let's link to the uh entry points page so okay so, all right uh that way hopefully you know we have right got it got to provide all the new people with all the information they need so transfer learning and then we'll go and we'll, we'll mess with this load stuff so, um, and then the transfer learning one. Okay, so okay, so. Question that okay. Okay. Doesn't have in large replace that con. Okay, great. Uh uh, about the train output, uh, I get some messy outputs uh, on my notebook, uh, right. like uh, some CUDA warnings, and uh, it also shows my local paths. So I, I decided to not show the train output. 
All right. Um, let's see. Let me read this. Uh, I don't get any outputs on train at all other than the warnings about CUDA and my local pass. So, okay, and that's what you just said. wasn't sure if this is deep or outputs are to be expected at all. Show the train output here. Also, the extraction and feature extraction example doesn't have in layers replaced to accommodate rock person. I wasn't I wasn't sure what's the default on an interaction between pipe torch and default. So I asked you about the other one on Gitter. So you replied to my queries. I had assumed we're adjusting layers to fully and then adding layers is false and classifications to define it. But the answer to the model, I have having layers adjusted to the number and classifications by default rather than setting them to thousands or whatever. Uh, yeah, that seems like something we should change. Um, similarly, applying to the example, the out features should be 3 and not 17. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for the catch. Fire data set. I forgot to adjust for rock, paper, scissors. Both the cases are almost the same. Return and rule proof being true and false. Maybe we should change. It's like, okay. Okay, let me look at this. It's been a while. Um, all right, okay. So, uh, trainable. Fine tuning, we said trainable equals true. Okay. Fine tune the scene. Okay, so this is basically where Saksham has said, let's add some layers. So if we're adding layers to things, then trainable is true, uh, I believe, right? Or what's features predict? Or why are we okay? Uh, basically, he's saying that uh, oh, yeah. uh, the difference between the two use cases is just setting the trainable uh, both to true and false. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, just you know showcase uh, one of the use cases. Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead of uh, you know, two of them. Okay. So you five. Let's open that up. Okay, dokie. So, yeah, it could be good. I think might as might as well. Um, let's see. Wait a minute. So close. Okay. So, in this demo, we'll be using the rock paper scissors image image classification data set. Data set. The purpose of this notebook is to perform transfer learning using the PyTorch pre-trained model through DFML Python API. Most used types of transfer learning are fine-tuning and feature extraction. Um, let's see. Uh, see and for feature extraction using the representations learned by previous network. Extract meaningful features from new samples. You simply add a classifier, which we train from scratch, on top of the pre-trained model. In this approach, we generally freeze all the weights and layers except for the final layers. In DFML, the weights of our leather layers are frozen by setting trainable equals false, which is also set by default. We simply add new classifier, which we train from scratch on top of the pre trained model. In this approach, we generally freeze all the weights of layers except the finer layers. In DFML, the weights of other layers are frozen by setting trainable equals false. Okay. 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 All right. Um, let's see. Um, fine tuning the CNN. I'm wondering, you know, about the word trainable <laughs> um, and whether that's the best word for this. So fine tuning the CNN. Unfreezing the weights at the top layers in a frozen model base. Jointly training. Is that what we have in the documentation about it? Um, PyTorch. I assume we have a plethora of models, don't we? Okay, yeah. Uh, trainable. Tweak pre trained model by training again. This could use some updating. Um, let's see. So I'm freezing the weights and others. I think we may want to take your description from here and put it in the body of trainable. Uh, so let's see.
model PyTorch uh, update trainable help message uh, or more detailed. Okay. Um, the help message for yeah, the trainable. Haha. -ha. Um, let's see. Did I get the capitalization on your username right? Okay, no. no. Uh, uh, transfer learning. Or what is it? Is this a transfer? Yeah. Yeah. Creating issues got a lot faster. All right, so fine tuning is seen. Unfreezing the weights on top of layers and frozen model based and jointly training both the newly added classifier layers and the last layers of the base model. It's done by setting the training will equals true parameter of this product. I had a custom layer model before performing the fine tuning of CLM. All right, great. Cross entropy loss function. Okay, and I think we we're supposed to get entry points for these as well. Um, so. Oops, my plot lab, Jesus. Okay, so build our data set. Um, let me actually reload this thing. Discard. Did you have something? Did you want to say something? Okay, let's see. And it looks like, no. did, did we link to the master branch on this? We should probably link to the released version. Um... I mean, it won't matter if you're doing, yeah, it won't matter if you're doing um, the reference. So let's just make a note of that. So um, for uh, let's link to uh, this will hopefully be solved if we can use the uh, Sphinx reference. Right. Or whatever it is, it may not be that. Um, Okay, so da, 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 great. All right, we're going to download all this stuff and directory source, directory for source, directory source. Okay. Data. Okay. Let's see. I think it would be good to say, really? Oh, yeah, because this block didn't like matplotlib on my computer. Okay, so I think it might be good to say what these things look like. Um, so, how do we get a new cell? There we go. What happens if we tree? All right, so... Test RPS paper. RPS paper. And then we have a bunch of paper files. And rock. Okay. So let's see. Because I'm wondering how do we explain how the directory source works a little better. Because I think we probably haven't explained it well enough. Um, and we should probably update the docs. So... Folder name, RPS, feature, image, labels, rock, paper, scissors. I guess uh, I can link this one as well. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the main issue is I don't think we have it in the docs very well. So 
let's see where is sources sources there yeah there's like no docs on this so we need to make sure we have docs on that um i'm thinking about this as maybe an opportunity to explain it a little more so feature folder name is what folder it is labels rock paper scissors because it's like you know it's really doesn't tell us much right um let's see yeah. um yeah folder name yes yes Okay, so we're features, image, and labels are rock, paper, scissors, which basically means the subdirectories, if I read this correctly. Correct, correctly. Um, yeah, okay, so we have a subdirectory of paper, we have a subdirectory of scissors, and rock. Okay, so let's just add a little note. So uh, feature is the feature name, the loaded data, or the, okay, so uh, folder name, and this should really be directory <laughs> if we did directory search. All right, so uh, is the directory we are loading from, um, Labels are the um, we don't even have help on this, do we? Or let's see, no, maybe under the plugins page because this is the API docs. folder name yeah okay these these will we'll take this and we'll update these and we'll link to this so let's link to this dir source so let's link to the dir source in the plugins page um which let's see where's the there's no view source on this yeah so um it should be there should be a tag what are the damn um Default, none, default, simple. There should be a yeah plugin source to want to be permalink to headline. Okay, so these should be plugin source. I think it is. I think that the ref plugin models, plugin sources, docs. Plugins. I wonder. Okay, so I'm trying to find the um, uh, the the tag that we need to link to, um, or the reference. I'm wondering where is that ref. Plugin model DFML. Well, okay, so plugin, not plugins. Okay, so it's going to be ref dir source. So transfer learning ref directory source plugin. And then this would be okay. These link directly to the these link to the plugins themselves, but okay, model TensorFlow DF DFMLC. So this would be model DFML or source DFML dir. Alright, so that should give us the link there. Um, okay, labels are the folders within or the directories within folder name 
which contain images um, and labels as rock, paper, scissors. So, oh, and then so you're going to load each record, we'll get. Classifications for our So these are the sub. Okay, this is the label that's assigned. Okay, yeah, we need better documentation on this directory source thing. So basically, it's going to iterate through all these. It's going to assign the feature to be image, and it's going to assign the label to be rock, paper, or scissors based on the directory name. Um, feature is the name of the feature within the record that will contain image data. Uh, the data, um, or let's see, the Labels, rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, okay. So we need, let's just, let's get Saksham to explain this some more because this is like, where will the label go? You know, um, feature predict label. Okay, yeah. So that needs to be configurable as well. So that's a problem. So um, let's see. The label feature will be set to corresponding the uh, directory um, the image was found in. Is that correct? Yeah, okay, so this is not predict, or no, predict label classifications, rock, paper, scissors, features, yeah, we need some more explanation from Saksham on this directory source. All right, so we load the model. Okay, you you added your layers. You loaded the model. Um, and then now we leave that true. Load, okay. Okay. Let us actually set these values here. So, and then mention that they're the defaults because explicit is better um, than implicit. So, especially for the tutorial. So let's, let's actually set these, right? So we set trainable, right? right and then we can say, but it is also the default value. And similarly, we're leaving out, or we set pre-trained even though it's the default value because we're about to change it, right? We're about to do, we're about to do a different value down here, right? Um, so trainable equals true and pre-trained, you know, essentially now is, well, we're not, we don't even mention or pre-trained. Yeah, we, uh, because uh, pre-trained uh, is true for both of them. Okay, so pre-trained is default. Oh yeah, okay. So pre-trained is true. All right, so then let's if we're not going to change yes, pre-trained, then let's not worry about it. What? I was saying you actually have to uh, make this bool value true if you're dealing with pre-trained models. Ah. Uh, okay. Hmm. Let's see. So display image predictions. Oh, great. Yeah, this is that thing that, um, this is nice. Okay. Uh, and then you have the confidence. Okay, great. Um, train the model. Okay, and then you have improved confidence. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, and you have the testing. Perfect. Looks good. Yeah. So let's just let's just set trainable to false here, just so that there's a like a 
you know, a, a difference. And then what else did we say? Um, then, yeah, let's get some explanation from Sakshan for the directory source. Let's actually just, let's, we can just create an issue for that. Um, and if you link to it, that'll be enough because then we can update that later, right? Um, okay, looks good. So, uh, are we not squashing the two use cases? Uh, which use cases? Uh, like Saksham suggested that we just, uh, you know, uh, make the notebook for one of these use cases and uh, mention that if you want to do the other one, you can just change the bool value or printable to uh, false. Oh, I see. So basically, yeah. So basically, add add the because add the layers. Show trainable equals true, and then just say, hey, if you didn't want to do, if you didn't want to do this, then show trainable equals. Yeah, then don't yeah, add the layers. To, yeah, if we make uh, the uh, use case for uh, tuning uh, for feature extraction, then we can say that uh, if you want to do. Uh, do it for uh, tuning the CNN. You can, uh, you know, set the pool value of printable to the other value. Yeah, let's see. So, cross search for last, last layers. And last layers is, so covenant, last layers is covenant. And we don't, oh, yeah, we're using last layers both places, though. So. Am I missing something here, or? So yeah, we're... we are, because uh, it's essentially the same. Uh, we are uh, using the same layers. Oh, yeah. The difference is that, oh, wait. Yeah, I think uh, we shouldn't be using those last layers. Yeah, because if we're not doing trainable, then why are we adding... Or let's see. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Or... Uh, uh, Saksham said that you still have to use the last layers. Yeah. Uh, because uh, you're essentially changing the output. Yeah, the output. So you yeah. still have to change the layers. Yeah. Okay. Um... <laughs> Features three. Okay. Okay. Um... Features okay, yeah. So basically, so generally training both an Iliadic class. Okay, so yeah, I mean, there's really not much of a difference then, right? Like, you really just flip the switch and then you display again. Yeah, so do we really need to do it? Um, yeah, the whole difference between uh, the two of them is just the Boolean value trainable. Yeah, yeah, so like, what what do we really gain out of that? Um, and it does. It looks like the the results. The re, I mean, the results are are not any difference, right? So let's see. The accuracy is ninety versus the accuracy is ninety seven. So <laughs> so at this point, yeah, I don't know if we get much out of saying, you know, doing that doing that last portion, right? Um. And freezing. I mean, unless we have a, because this this doesn't really sh explain, you know, adding adding this part doesn't tell us anything as the end user. It's kind of actually more confusing because all of a sudden we have a less accurate model, and it's like, well, why would I want to do this, right? So unless we have a compelling sort of, you know, a, a compelling example as as to to why someone might want to do this, you know, which is basically higher accuracy or, or, or otherwise, right? Something something other than that, um, then I don't think we should do it, right? Yeah. Um. So let's see. 
and this uh, train output is the one I'm I was talking about. Uh, train output. Wait, sorry, where? When? Uh, in the uh, cell that's training the model. In the cell that's training. Yeah. The model. So. Oh, this. Yeah. This. Yeah, so I've been uh, clearing the outputs for all the train trains. And yeah, I would just delete this before you commit, right? You can just yeah. remove it from the JSON file. Okay, cool. All right, okay, so let's see. So we spent a bunch of time reviewing this, but... Okay, so um, I think that's good. Same stuff, you know, basically do the link, link to the directory source we submitted. Did we submit the issue? Or not? I don't think we did, right? About the um, more detailed. Okay, no, we need also the so source dir. Uh, need example usage and documentation. Uh, section oh, okay okay um great so let's see so we gotta okay we gotta move on we don't have a ton of time so um let's talk about this so Sutanchu um, what did what did you want to talk about today? Do we have Sutanchu still? Uh, so I had to discuss some things related to the uh, shorthand command creation. Okay. Let's see. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Crap. I didn't. I forgot about this. Sorry. Um, okay. I'm thinking we're, we're, we're okay, this is already a long meeting. Um, so, shorthand command creation. So, what did you, let's see, so implement data clusters, so rename directory for location. So, the, the directory, let me see. Oops. So, this, the directory to location PR is really just, I'll have to go through it and make sure, it are all the tests passing. Yes, all the tests are passing, and the one that that one is failing, update. Uh, okay, yeah, that's reason. just the the lint. Yeah, that the, that's just a, a helper test for us. So, all right, okay. So, let's just make a note of that. All tests are passing. Okay, uh, only uh, lines lint message is failing. Okay, um, but verified. Okay. Okay. Um, implement data flows for save lows, and then uh, create command. Okay. So, the data flows for save load and the create command. All right. So, the data flows for save load of location. Um, Okay, let's just talk about the create command real quick first, and then we'll talk about that. So, so what did you do? You have anything you wanted to show us, um, or? Yep, I would like to uh, show something. So previously, uh, what we discussed was that, uh, so we had something like this, right? Where we discussed that uh, uh, if we want to perform some operation on some uh, feature. This is the issue that I couldn't find the other day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry, go for it. Yeah, so, uh, so we had to like perform a specific operation on one of the source features, right? Mm -hmm. And we had to provide uh, where the data should go, the operations. In yeah, this was sort of the, the, 
the the this was our initial thinking about how we might do something simplified like that. Yeah. So uh, we were actually now doing it with the help of a, a data flow. So what I have created here is this is the create short command data flow. So mm -hmm. uh, so I had to discuss like uh, so doing the pre-processing thing. So if I'm thinking of providing it input something like this. So I have taken that same example, but uh, this is the operation that you want to perform and mm -hmm. the inputs array, which should give it uh, the value from the source features. And uh, the denominator should be provided from something here, which is the value. Okay, okay. So, so this was my initial thinking, like, uh, like how we can like provide the values. Okay. But, uh, I'm also unable to uh, figure out like, uh, like, like, uh, so I have a people, a data flow here, like when I do like pre processing here, so let's suppose we add another feature, like another uh, uh, entry here, pre processing, and we provide it the, uh, the operations, the features which needs pre processing. So how does the memory orchestrator know what to do with it? When you say need pre-processing, what does that mean? So, uh, so, uh, so we have a data flow, right? Mm -hmm. And some of the features actually need to be pre-processed. Mm -hmm. So, for, according to my understanding, what I'm thinking is we have to keep something like pre-processing, and then we'll have to have like inputs and outputs, like or the, the mapping, this kind of mapping should be there. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, go for so, it. And, and, and like when we run this using the data flow, so this week, like I was actually trying to read all the code of the data flow, mm -hmm. data flow source and the memory orchestrator. Uh oh. <laughs> so I was trying to figure out uh, like how, how does it know like we have to do the processing stuff now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think let's just flip back to that issue real quick at 370. Um, okay. So let's see. So this was originally, let's see, this was originally about the pre-processing source. And so we were going to add this pre-processing source that was like a, that was essentially like a, a helper around, you know, a few uh, creating creating a data flow that just does a couple, or just basically, it was it was supposed to be a helper that basically said, okay, take this feature and run it through this operation with yeah. these other inputs, right? Yeah. So in this case, it was um, let's see, so so we have this image feature and we wanted to normalize the image um so source image source okay features image yeah basically we're just taking every image and we're running the array of the image data through this array normalize operation yeah. um and then we're saying that the so features image feature is array so the so the array normalized input has array mm -hmm. And that should be provided from this value. Yep. So that, that the, the feature to pass. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the inputs, the, so so inputs, so Im, so the third line there, that source image features image inputs denominator says hard code the denominator for each call to be 255. Yes. And then the sources image feature array says use the array or use the okay so image op so the image opera or so the this is the the image feature let's see the feature the value of the feature goes to the array uh the array input right because there's array and denominator okay so i think <clears throat> let's see so this, so was, this was the, yeah the, like how we were 
thinking it for mm-hmm. like making it a source thing mm-hmm. but now when we are trying to do it as a data flow then i was thinking like maybe like how we are providing the value uh for the flow i was thinking like same way we can provide the value for that as well for people so. okay so i think there may be a disconnect on the pre-processing thing so i don't know i don't think we need to treat pre-processing as like a separate in anything separate right when when we were originally talking about this create shorthand data flow command um, yes. I think what we we talked about was essentially a way to wire up, um, you know, a, a, let's flip back to that, that where was that other one, dataflow.sh. Um, the, yeah, this yeah, so what we'd really originally talked about, I think, was sort of like a, you know, an, an easier version of this command, right? Because this lets you link anything in any way you want, right? But it's definitely not not the most user friendly. So, um, so in this case, what did we want to do here? Yeah, like, like let's look at this, and look at how we might, you know, do a shorthand create version of this, right? Um, and so, what we want to do here is we want to take okay, city month state, and put these into the lookup population and lookup temperature, right? So this might be something like. Um, here let's see okay so inputs get single spec so we want so if we were doing this shorthand create command we might just assume that we want the output of every operation that we're feeding into it right because that's what you did here so basically you pass get single spec and you said you know give me temperature and population which is going to be the outputs of lookup temperature and lookup population um, yes. Right. So if we were doing a shorthand command, we could we could if we had data flow, DFML data flow, create short, we might say, OK, let's automatically do a get single spec for each output of each operation that we were passed. Right. OK. Um, and then that would eliminate because I'm, I'm let's we're just trying to think about, like, how do we shorten this command? Right. Um, and so that would eliminate the need to pass the get single spec stuff. Um, for the flow, we're saying, okay, we want the city to go to the imp- the city input, month to go to the imp- month input, um, city go to city and state go to state. Um, so let's see. What could we do here? So this is about the inputs that we're passing to the network. Um, so this is kind of that feature stuff where it's like, okay, where does that end up? Um, so let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what what were you envisioning here? Like, what does your current code do, I guess? So it's very similar to the create command this is actually similar to create command Mm -hmm. but the only part which i was uh, like thinking uh like having some pre-processing thing okay and what is the what did what did you were you did you have an idea for what the pre-processing would be so far or or were you just you haven't gotten to that yet so i haven't got into that yet okay so I think that so what we did what we did with the preprocessing sources we essentially said we know what input data we have right the input data that we have is is any features from the records right and and the definitions become the record the the feature names right um, and so then it was really a matter of saying okay well for each uh, we we can assign one operation to to change the data which was the pre-processing of each feature, right? Um, so for the shorthand create command, we could take a similar approach and we could say, you know, we could basically say, because here in the long version we have, you know, uh, we're, we're saying city, months, and state, right? And we're telling it where those should go, right? So, so we could focus once again on, on the input data and we could have this shorthand create command function in a similar way 
where it basically says, okay, here's my input data and, and where should my input data go, right? Um, so you could say, yeah, let's see. Um, you know, I, I, I think that copying that syntax that we had might actually still be a good way to go. Um, and implementing the dictionary of the config dictionary stuff um, because this yeah yeah right so essentially the, the point of this was was really you know we had this this was the let me go back let me flip to this issue as well so I can have it open um, so we discussed this on <laughs> yeah this is a while ago <laughs> yeah. um, let's see yeah, we talked about it semi recently, didn't we? Okay, cheers. All right. Um, yeah, and this is when we talked about the shorthand command. So, and this is from January of 2020. Okay. So, shorthand for cre oh, and this is the issue now. Oh, that's why it's been renamed already. Okay. Um, I was searching for the old issue title. All right. So, um, the main thing here that needed to happen is is the uh, is that dictionary, the implementing the dictionary support for configs. Um, and let's see, because if you do that, then let's see, features, okay. If you do that, then you can, if, if you implement that, that support for the, for the dictionary, right? then you can begin to, to traverse that dictionary and link up the inputs and the outputs of like and link up the inputs and the outputs of the various operations in your data flow based on those dictionaries right um so which is what we were sort of showing down below right so if you were to provide the command line flags that say, so for example, if we go down, right, and we're looking at your example, right, with the, maybe we should, here, let me, let me sort of pop open, let me present, and then I'll show what I was thinking, like, with that, with that example that, that you have um, with the ice cream sales. So, um, Uh, examples. Right, uh. Okay. Um, and where did we have it? Or no, it's within the demo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's the create command. Mm -hmm. All right. So what if we were to take this and do a shorthand of it? Um, um, that would be... Sorry. So shorthand is, uh, is actually... The, the main idea behind shorthand creation is that uh, we can actually uh, modify the records uh, while it's in the flow itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so in so when you say in the flow, like what what do, what do you what do you mean here? Like we're, like what is what is the use case? What was the use case that brought this up? Because I think I'm I'm confused at this point. As, so as... the use case was that uh, in the ice cream and in the ice cream demo, mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, like uh, we had like data points, right? City, state, mm -hmm. and month. Mm -hmm. So so while going through the data flow, like we had to bring in the population and the temperature, mm -hmm. and so we actually did that using the merge command. Mm, the merge command. Okay. Yes. So that actually brought us to the point: like, can we actually make changes to the records while we are going through the data flow itself? Mm. Okay. Uh, 
I mean, let's see, pre-process ops. Ooh. Well, we didn't have, have to use... Sorry, what? Similarly, like, we had the idea of the chain command. Mm -hmm. Yes, where we take uh, a, the data, pre-process data from one data flow and process it using another data flow without mm -hmm. using the merge command. Okay, because the thing is, right now, we could, we didn't have to use the merge command, right? Like, we used the merge command just to throw the data into another source so that we yes. could see the results. But we could have just as well put it, I mean, if we do, if we do this, um, this will get the same results, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess, I mean, so I, I mean, I see the value in the create command. I guess I don't understand quite, I still don't quite understand what, what the use case is right now that we're trying to do. Cause uh, right now uh, we don't have any. Okay. Okay. Cause we talked about the chain and we talked about, yeah. And the shorthand, because I think, I mean, I think if we follow, let's, we can just do this for a second, but it's, this is, so in the, in the vein of this, right, if we follow this pattern that we had here, just for the sake of example, um, data flow create short, right, we could say, um, we have our input data. Just, and, and we'll just, you know, this is not what we'd want to call things right now, but, right, so city, um, month, and state, right, and so this would be our input data, um, and then, you know, the flow would basically be, um, you know, let's see, well, what did we have here, so this Taking this, we could say, um, so city, city op would be look up temperature, um, and then the city, uh, just so the city, the data of the or city value. So city operation goes to look up temperature. The value of the city goes to the um, city input. And then the inputs look up temperature month. OK, yeah, so this is where all of a sudden now this breaks down. Um, so month op. Yeah, you really have to define this by, let's see. Can you do it by operation, op, look up temperature, um, you know, so city is city, and then month. I'm trying to play with what the syntax would be, right? So, because if you say, if you say, if we did it this way, right, now all of a sudden when I do month, it's like, well, okay, is this the same instance of lookup temperature? Is it a different instance of lookup temperature? So the operation for month is lookup temperature, the or because this, but now you need to put month two places. So you really want to say this, like, here's the, here's the operations and here's the data or here's the definitions where they're coming from, right? Um, and then lookup population, the same thing. I don't know. I guess you could you could do it. It seems like this might be the where this is going. You have to do it by operation, right? Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like, because the previous approach that we prototyped here was by feature data, right? But if you're looking at, for example, this this you know this one that you had just been messing, like the the one that we had just had as an example here it becomes clear that you want to do it by, you want to define the data flow, the shorthand data flow by, uh, by um, operation, right? 
um, because you're going to have multiple pieces of data going to different operations, right? Um, so you could do another you could do another version where it's by feature, right? But let's see. I guess if we were to take this array normalize one and go by feature, then it looks. What does it look like? I mean, so array is uh, image and denominator is 255 so then it's like okay well is this a hard-coded value or is this um okay well yeah okay so if it doesn't appear here then it's a hard-coded value but also you know what if you have a feature name that is the same as the hard-coded value right so I don't know. These are these are these are options, right? Um, I think that if you want to do a short command, it seems like you probably should denominator. Yeah. So array comes from image. Denominator is two fifty five. So yeah, you could do something like um, input image or value 255 but that is not this is not that's not clean um i would say array yeah because you have to think about the other thing you have to think about is how is this going to look as like a yaml representation or a json representation because we still have to support we're going to try to support the config files eventually right so and that's probably hopefully soon. So yeah, you the, the, your 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 trick here is really how do you how do you how do you differentiate between hard coded values and input data? You know, and what like say you know what 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 if the input data is the same as the hard coded value? Because if you had you know image and then you needed to use the value of image as a literal, then that would be different, right? Um, uh yeah anyways i mean you could you could you could do array normalize or input op array normalize denominator op array normalize denominator 255 array normalize array image you could do something like this right where you can define here, you could do top level keys for these are going to take inputs and these are going to take values, right? Um, and you could do it like this, right? So input array normalize array comes from image seed array normalize denominator. It's 255. There you go. Because this says that I think that's clean. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Um, and then the last thing would be, okay, so then you would have, you know, so input or normalize. So you would have to implement the dictionary type on the config to do that. And then you'd have to implement dic the same seed would also be a dictionary type. Um, and what do we have here? So this is inputs. So array no image array comes from image. This is a seed value. Now, this the problem is okay. You need to, you need to. Um, what are we currently we have? CLI data flow. Um, create config inputs. I think the inputs just get tagged as seed right now. Nice. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, they all get tagged as seed. So we really need a, we really, yeah, exported seed. We really need a, we really should be changing. We should really have data flow. We, the seed section should really be um, inputs and then origin should be set as seed for each of them. Because the whole concept with seed is that it allows you to, to clearly know where your input data came from, right? And so if you're dealing with trusted versus untrusted input, then 
you you know right away that the seed stuff is coming from you know predefined and if you said maybe origin equals untrusted then you would know that you can't trust this data right and you wouldn't feed it to operations that need only trusted data um so anyways okay th does that give you something to play with I, th I think i think the moral of the story is you probably need to implement the dict stuff on on config if you want to do this because uh, i don't i mean i don't see a path forward that doesn't involve that um the pre-process of config thing right you're talking yeah i'm talking about yeah i'm talking about um default base so if you are let's see so this is make arg I'm talking about, so if we come in here, yeah, so in base, there's this convert value stuff. There's, so this is config dict. All of this stuff, I mean, all of this stuff is kind of a mess because we've, we're still in the middle of transitioning it to one unified thing, right? Um, so this config, right, so here's our config class. Didn't we just change this? Um, maybe it's in a PR. Oh, crap. Okay, whatever. Um, make config. So these config classes, right? So if they see a... If we go in, if we write a class that's like the one you just showed, which is, you know, this stuff here, right? Yes. So the, the, the implementation trick here is what do you do when you see dict, right? And then what do you do when you when you see a data type here? Right, because what we're doing is in this convert value, let's see, is it in convert value? Uh, let's see, yeah. So when we get into convert value, we say, okay, what's the argument and what's the value? And the arg is, comes from mkarg, this function here, right? And this is basically inspecting the data types of the fields on the, on the, uh, on the, the config class, right? So you're going to get something that represents features. It'll say the data type is dict, right? And then you're going to need to go in, and I believe it's field annotation. Um, so, and see, yeah, arg annotation, right? So you'll come in and you'll basically say, okay, if it's instance value stir, type class is not stir, dict to data class. So this is saying, this basically says, okay, if the, if the field is if this is a data class, right, then you're going to go through and, and uh, change the dictionary to the data class. Right? And this is probably around where you might want to do it um, in here is, let's see, you know, what is this? So type in arg. Yeah, so convert equals true. So this is... Okay, so this does things like unions and stuff, trying to convert the type to the arg. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, and it also handles things that are already there. So you'll probably end up in this thing here where you're saying, okay, this, you probably add another statement here where you say, if it's a dictionary and the annotator, or well, maybe you'll end up in here. If it's a dictionary and the annotation is of type dict, then you need to go in and then you need to recursively call this convert value function on each uh, on each value in that dictionary right and then you need to return the um, then you'll return you'll return a dictionary with each value so the keys stay the same and the values get passed recursively through this function again um, I believe that that is what will happen here for you. Now, <laughs> now, you, 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 you'll find that this is much trickier than, than that um, yeah. because the config for code is hard. Um, so, all right, okay. So, um, are we good on that then? Yep, I'll try that. Okay, great. Because that would be a big thing to have. So that would be great if you feel like doing that. All right, so then, and then we... Then the so the location rename. Um, so I'm gonna just double check that before I merge that. So implement data flow save load for location. Um, this is uh, I hope I think this is a pretty good segue. We talked about saving loading. We talked about data flows, and now we're talking about saving loading data flows. So um, forgive the 
long timeline here, but at least we are on topic. So um, let's take a look at that stuff we were just doing um, with the create um, class method. So yeah, so we talked about, you know, create create the model and we had, you know, our previous code had like the union and stuff. So if we go and we look at model model. So we go and we look at model. Um, you know, we talked about taking this. Um, we talked about basically taking the load method and making a create method. We talked about splitting out the um, let me <laughs> capture this in the notes. I talked about uh, making uh, will play with uh, config code to implement dict support. Okay. Um, so, oops. So, talked about making um, uh, model create class method um, and so talked about moving um, high level uh, code into a directory and splitting out into files such as high level slash data flow similar to CLI. Okay, um, so yeah, so basically we talked about this. So now we're thinking, okay, what if we had, um, what if we had this way of saving and loading models, right? Okay, so and and this obviously this is feeding off. Or this is coming from the location, the directory to location stuff. So if we change directly to location and we talked about, okay, so this clearly here is doing a, you know, this is modifying the config parameter. And I think we talked about a little bit in the issue comment that we probably want to move to something like, you know, just setting the property, right? Um, so that way, you know, because this is something that, that is dynamic for the lifetime of the class. So say we set the property um, rather than changing the config parameter, right? Um, and so, okay, so then, you know, what we wanted to do is, uh, what we want to do here is basically say on a enter, um, you know, what do, can we load, can we load this thing? Um, and we wanted to create a data flow based off of the location parameter, which is the, you know, the directory, which will be the location. Um, and let me just make sure. Yeah, so I so initially I pushed a similar thing. So mm -hmm. can we look at that yep. check out and like discuss it? So it would be what PR easy. number is it? Uh, it is uh, eleven fifty five only, but it was a previous checkout. So okay. it was a previous comment, yeah. so we, which was reverted later on. So you have to look into it. Uh, shall I paste the uh, uh, comment hash on? That's okay. I can see what it is. So let's say so is before all this. Um, revert, revert. Okay, so it's probably before these reverts. Okay, so this is the location stuff. In this only, like SLR one was working. Uh, SLR. Okay. Test cases and this is the code we want to talk about here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Perfect. All right. So yeah. So 
So if location is false, so yeah. So we said basically we'll make config location just be location, um, and then let's let's you know um, we'll just only call this when we're um, you know there. Um, Actually, so, I did it because it was to be called twice, once and enter, and once and exit. So I just made it. Ah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So. And actually, you know, this is going to be self. You will just leave this as self.config.location as file because we won't change it, right? Um, and that way, we don't that way we don't modify the config object itself, um, which means that we should probably be marketing. We'll, we'll probably mark. Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, okay, that's that looks good. Um, because we talked about the mutability stuff too. And so if somebody mutates the location parameter in between saving and loading, we would want to make sure that we, we, we save out to the, to, the new, to the newly modified place right here. Okay, and if you're using config location, it'll do that. All right, so then we dump the config. Um, and I think we want uh, .export here. Um, Let's see, I don't, can't remember if it's doing dot .export. Does it do export? Okay, it doesn't really matter right now. I think there is an export, uh, an export. This is dfml.util.data. We can change that though. Um, so export the thing, um, output location, config file location. Run operation. Okay, so and this was the run operation stuff. Okay, and create data flow. Okay, create data flow. Yeah. Okay, and this made me think. Let's see. Operations. Um. Okay, so I think the one thing here was, all right, and I think maybe we did. I think the. Uh, uh, GHPR list. Okay, so the what was that last PR? Uh, what was the one that we merged the models? Let's see, or er, the operations, I mean, uh, operation archive, this guy. Okay. Um, okay, and then this got rebased. Okay. All right, because originally, so originally on this one, Click that. Okay, whatever. So originally, I think you had optional parameters for the file names, right? Yes, but uh, they were dropped later on as per your yeah. feedback, something like okay. that. Happened. Yes. So we had, let's use different definitions. Okay. And then we ended up just passing the thing. Okay, rename definitions. Let me see. I want to see what, what the hell we talked about here. All right, so, a few formats. Uh, different definitions. Can we go to the outdated version? All right, back. Okay, so. Okay, okay, this was the stuff. Okay, so this was... Removed optional parameter. Okay, so...
this is the optional parameters. Okay, so we had, oh, that's what happened. Okay, so we had optional parameters, but no outputs. Did we ever have outputs? No, we never had outputs. Okay, so I think that this is probably, this is probably, I, I, okay, so I think we need to make outputs on these um, because what I realized was, and on the compression ones themselves, so, um, yeah, I think we need to make out uh, outputs because did we? All right, this is still like this. Okay, so I think we need to make outputs because if we don't have outputs, you know, everything is event based. So basically, when we finish decompressing a file, even though we took the input decompress file path we won't know that it's been decompressed or not unless we have an output. Um, so, uh, decompress file path. Um, output file path. Yeah. Output file... Or yeah, maybe these should be like... I think this is this was sort of because looking at the um, looking at the code, uh, where is the um, okay? So looking at the code in model. So looking at the code and model here, so run operation. So basically, a enter. So you know, is zip file. So basically, so if the location is a file, right? Then we talked about like we want to load the appropriate operations. Um, so so where is that like? Um, Where's that stuff from? Different high level. All right. Yeah, this is the exact same stuff we need. So if we've got this location as file, right, or like this, where it's like, okay, so if if the location is if the location is a file, right? Um, uh, basically, so yeah. So we want to do we want to load. So the suffixes we basically look at the suffixes, right? Um, and we want to load operations based on the suffixes of the file. Right, so if um, self.config.location is uh, equals, um, you know, uh, model.tar.gz, um, you know, we load the, let's see, we take suffixes, um, and we'd say, you know, if there's two extensions, if there's two extensions, what? Can I interrupt you for a moment? Yeah, go for it. So the thing is, like, uh, the extensions may be written differently. Dot uh, dot gz may even be written as tgz. Yeah. Uh, similarly, so uh, the best way to know if a file is an archive or not is like uh, using the libraries is zip file or is tar file function and then getting tar file info or something like that. So to check if it is a archive or not, that is uh, much more reliable. Uh, otherwise, you might end up in like a lot of ifs and stuff. I uh, think so. Yes, yeah, you could, you could, you so you could definitely do that, right? But then you're going to end up. So in the case where, okay, so we, so you can def, you yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, we need the the. The point of this, though, is is really to create the data flows, right? Um, so, it, we we really just need to get like a minimum a minimum thing working, right? Um, and 
yeah okay so yeah you can go and you can do zip file tar file the the point is to to build to build the data flow right um so I, ideally what you do, would do is you'd figure out what extensions you need right and then you load the operations that you need based on the extensions that you have right so for example if you had um if you had like you said so tgz right then you would map this to um tar and then gz right and then you would load the archive operation for tar and the compression operation for gzip right um so, so, so i'm just saying is that like a file may not be named properly yeah it may it may not be named properly but that's not so so okay so what's your what's give me an example of your give me an example here example like create tar but with gz but don't name it as tar or gz just name it dot tar it will uh, like end up being in a different bucket of data flows which should, it shouldn't be in so, so but if you do the tar file is tar file on that you know and it's just a tar it's not going to tell you whether it's compressed or not right yes exactly so i can name it anything with dot so dot uh, something is not uh, you know, it, it can be anything. So yeah, yeah, you could well, exactly, yeah, to. yeah, you can name it anything, right? But but the thing is, so so the the is zip file and is tar file, they won't work if it's been compressed, right? With some other algorithm, right? We we won't it won't say true if it if it's been compressed, right? Well, uh, I guess it should. I'm not sure. Like, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's so. This is something to this is something to consider, right? But sort of the 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 point of this is is it can get arbitrarily complex very quickly, right? Um, because I don't. I think zip file also incorporates its own compression algorithms. Um, I believe they have some internal support for that. Tar file. I let's see. Hi, tar file. Um, I don't know. Okay, yeah. So they have LZMA compression. Do they have it built in? Yeah, they do have it built in. All right. So yeah. So they have it built in. In which case, we really don't even need to. We didn't really need to do the compression algorithms separately, anyways. All right. So it seems like we don't even need to do the compression algorithms separately if they no, already no, have no, built-in support. We, we did compression algorithms separately because we wanted to compress anything if we want, like as a generic option to compress anything else as well yeah yeah so that's why we went with the separate compression yeah okay so so for now for now let's just focus on zip and tar files right and let's just run let's just run let's create two data flows right so so let's only focus on zip and tar files in in you know as as if they're they're named properly right and let's create two two data flows, right? So create one data flow on um, extraction that just runs the yeah. So you have like make zip archive and, and extract zip archive, make zip archive, right? So on a enter, if you see a zip extension, then or or you could do you know why yeah why don't you do the is zip file right? So if you see if you see you know self .config lo location yeah. So if you see the location is a zip file then run the zip art the zip extraction right that operation um and let's see we'll create the data flow so let's see yeah we want to return create data flow of input directory path output directory path operations file type action operation zip extract okay i see what you're doing here so input path dot suffix. Yeah, I mean, I think this looks good. Yeah, I think this looks good. You just need to add the tar stuff, right? Yes, actually, I just pushed it for a review. Like, if I was doing it correctly, okay, and I was great. about to add tar file support in this. So. Great, perfect. Okay, so it looks, yeah, it looks like this is good then. So, because, yeah, I didn't... Let's see. I don't think I didn't realize that tar file had built in. Well, 
I definitely knew so that, but I forgot. So provides a car info object, so it gives exactly yeah. which compression file is using in it. Perfect. And I think if you just pass it to open, it'll do the right one anyways, right? Yes, yes. Perfect. Okay, yeah, so... So let's, then all you have to do, yeah, you add your tar stuff. Just make sure that we do this as a separate PR. Did you do it as a separate PR? No, I was waiting on like location merge. So you, you, you said that like we will wait on location to merge and then we will do this. Okay, great. Okay, so yeah, this simplifies things. I was thinking that we were going to involve the compression operations as well, which, which made it more complicated because they didn't have outputs. And so I think the fix that we need is we need to make sure that the compression operations and the archive operations both have outputs because or else you can't really chain them together with other operations. What, what output should it give? The output it can output output the same file path. It just has to be a different definition uh, because or else it'll have have a, or, you know, you'll end up with an infinite loop there. Um, so we just need to output, we need an output from each of those operations so that if you were to hook them up to another operation, then, you know, they would trigger it. Um, so let's... Can we create a new issue for this? Now? Yes, definitely. Let's do it. Um, so let's see. And then I think, yeah, it looks like you're under the, the right you 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 you've got it down there um perfect all right so all right so let's do uh operation operation archive um uh make uh So this goes for archives and as well as compression methods, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so operations need an output. Uh, they, so they uh, completion can trigger. Because all the, all the data flow stuff is based on like events, right? And the output of one did the completion of one operation generates an output, which is an event that's an input to other things. So, vision can trigger um, other uh, operations. Um, uh, let's make so let's make the uh, name. Uh, we need to make sure we need to make sure the definition. The definition name is not the same as the um, uh, output file name input definition name uh, okay does that make sense mm, yes okay great um, and then let's do another one for impression so great perfect all right this greatly simplifies things without the, well, okay, so it doesn't greatly simplify things, but <laughs> you don't have to worry about doing these right now because you, you, the archive operations support the compression algorithms anyway, so that solves that. Um, great, okay, perfect. So let's all take a look at that, um, and because so then we can stop um, the meeting now, and then we'll get that merged. So, perfect. All right, anything else from anyone? Uh, I have dropped you a couple of messages regarding some stuff, so I just want you to Let's check see. Ones, um, oh, in our one-on-one -on -one chat or here? On one-on-one -on -one chat. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah, I'll give you some feedback. Perfect. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Is there any time to discuss multi-output models? Oh, multi-output models. Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, well, what did you want to discuss? Uh, I just wanted to ask if, uh, because uh, regression models uh, do natively support uh, multi-output, so I wanted to ask if we could, uh, you know, uh, uh, implement multi-output in the same psychic class rather than... I think, yeah, that makes sense. I think that makes sense. Okay. Um, and I would say, you know, probably just making... Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. I, I, I would probably go ahead and make predict a union of a list of features and a single feature um that's probably i mean that, like 
if you were to go in, so model psychic. I just didn't hear, hear you. Yeah, so I think I, I I I think that if you went in and made, um, like, you know, I think if you went in and made predict a, a you mean uh, make predict features instead of a single feature. Yeah, well, so I think you can you you could do union uh, feature. Yeah, yeah, I already did that. Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, and eventually, we need to drop that features class. I don't even think it's doing anything at this point. So, all right, great, cool. Yeah, so let's just uh, let's implement within scikit base for native regressors. Awesome. Sweet. Uh, um, oh, so we'll be doing the same for uh, classifiers, no? Oh, yeah, whatever, whatever natively supports, um, you know, without wrapping in in the multi. Uh, but... The classifiers don't natively support uh, multi output, but uh, you know, it's essentially just uh, calling the wrapper. So okay, I think we talked place? about. Well, we talked about maybe. We talked about having those as separate entry points was the thing. So I'm not, I mean, I would say use your, yeah, use, we, yeah. what did you, what, what, what changed your mind, I guess? Uh, it, it, it still will be separate entry points, but uh, like it will be called through the same psychic class, like the oh, rest of the oh, same okay. entry points that are. Yeah, I mean, I think that makes we sense. Just, uh, we just have a condition for, you know, when the, uh, the predict, predict is a list or if it's a single feature yeah i think and that's if perfect the... all right cool. yeah yeah i think yeah that that definitely makes sense sweet all right i'm excited to see that stuff all right cool all thank right. you guys thank you have a good one bye you too